All right, I want to make a comment about this thing of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2. I've seen this in the comments. I've heard this from other people. And I, I have kind of addressed it in some videos, but not really all that well. So I'm going to do a real quick little video here on this thing of what does it mean to believe in vain? Because a lot of the easy believers in people, they can't handle the fact that, that what they cling to for salvation, they say it's only about belief. There's no repenting of sin. There's no change life that comes after salvation. It's only, it's only belief. And you don't even have to call upon the name of the Lord, according to some of these heretics. You just don't, you don't ask God for salvation. Don't, don't say, please save me. You just believe it. Okay? And they can't handle a verse that says about the gospel in verse 1 and verse 2, unless you believed in vain. All right? It's the context of verses 1 and 2. Paul is declaring to them the gospel in verse 1, unless you have believed in verse 2. And believe in vain, excuse me, in verse 2. All right, let's just read it here. I'll show you what these people do. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. He's declaring to them the gospel. In context, he's talking about the gospel. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. It's a conditional clause. Learn that basic English truth here of the English language. If is, you know, a condition. As I've said, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And they'll say, well, see, you have to look at the context here. And then they'll jump down to uh, verse 14 of the chapter. They won't look at the context of the verse right before it. All right? It's insanity. These people are crazy in the head. But look at verse 14. They'll say, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Oh, see, that's what he's talking about there. Unless you have believed in vain. And it's our preaching is vain, and, and you know, your faith also is vain. So see, that's the vain there it's talking about in verse 2. I mean, talk about mental gymnastics. I declare unto you the gospel, unless you believed in vain... Verse 1, verse 2. Oh, no, it's actually the unless you believed in vain is jumping to verse 14. After Paul completely changes thoughts and things as you're going through there. All right, what's Paul talking about in verse 14? If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. All right, see, verse 2 is an action unless ye have believed in vain. Verse 14 is an event that happened. If Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. Why would your preaching be vain? Because Jesus didn't come up from the dead. He's just like any other religious leader, like Muhammad or Buddha or anybody. He died and he stayed dead. Right? It's talking about an event there. If Christ be not risen, our preaching is vain, your faith is vain. That's not what's talking about in verse 2. All right? So, a whole lot more stuff I could say on that, but it just... These people are just are so wicked and so satanic that they can't handle a verse which clearly exposes their sin. Their sin, uh, their real sin of saying that they've taken salvation for themselves by an act of their, their mental just imagination. And they'll say, it's salvation is going from unbelief to belief. That's what repentance is. Excuse me, repentance. They'll say, repentance is unbelief to belief. So in other words, not knowing to now knowing. That's what they're saying. So it's just an act of their mental understanding. That's all it is. That's all salvation is. There's no supernatural transaction that takes place. There's no sinner coming to God saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And God looking at his, at whether he's being sincere or not, because there's a lot of people that will mock and, or they get caught up in the moment at some church building that they go to, a revival meeting or some kind of thing. They don't really mean it. They don't really believe that they're a sinner. They're still holding on to their self-righteous pride. And the Lord can see right through that. The Lord's not going to save them. God has to purchase you with His blood. And the only way He's going to purchase you is if you come to Him on the right terms. His terms. It is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul says, of whom I am chief. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You can't be saved unless you're a sinner. 
And it's not just a general, well, all have sinned. We all know that everybody's sinned. And yes, technically we've all sinned. No, your personal sins... You're convicted about your personal sins and you know that if you stood before God, you'd go to hell and that you deserve to go to hell. That's the difference there. Because see, then you're no longer trusting in your own self-righteousness. You're coming and you're saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. And that's the only chance I have to get to heaven. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. See? See how the thing works? But the easy believers and people, they don't want that conviction of sin. They love the darkness that they live in. They don't want the light of God's word, of God's truth, shining into their wicked life and telling them to clean this up and get rid of that and whatever else. So they say, oh, salvation is just belief. You can just go, okay, I'm saved. <laughs> I don't need to get God involved in this thing because, you know, Jesus died on the cross, and that's, you know, back there, that's the salvation there. And, and I, all I got to do is just by an act of my own mental capacity, my own intellect, I can just, oh, okay, there, good. Yep. Where's the contrition? Where's, I'm sorry for my sin. Where, where's it at? It's not there. I just, oh, okay, I'm saved now. All right, going to go on and go back to drinking my beer or cussing or watching you know, wicked movies or whatever else. Don't fall for that wicked heresy. Thank you for watching.